Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll take it. <laughs> Looks like we have quite a few folks missing this morning. Let's pray that they find their way back to us. But for those that are here, we have gathered to worship God and to praise His holy name. Are there any announcements? And men, we missed you, some of you at the breakfast this morning. Good breakfast. Are there any announcements? I'm doing that. Sorry. Uh, Karen's not here, but she asked me to remind everybody that we changed the ladies' meeting from Tuesday to Monday, so it'll be tomorrow night at 6.30 in the fellowship building. And then uh, to remind everybody we're doing hot dog sale Wednesday from 11 to 2. And if anybody wants to make a dessert and or a sign up, please let Karen know. And if anybody wants to help, we'd love to have you. Any others? Be sure to look at the back of your bulletin and the announcements that are there. We have a cooperative Christian ministries needs are high. All food is needed. However, during the month of June, we're focusing on peanut butter. Please donate as you are able. So when you get your jar of peanut butter this month, buy two or three and bring one or two to the church. Also, the newsletter, uh, those of us who need to have something in it, is needed by June 28th. I'm more or less talking to myself on that one. Hot dogs, we mentioned that was 4th of July celebration, July 1st at 7 in the park. Bring your own food. Bring your own groceries. <laughs> and if you bring a whole lot, the pastor will sit with you. <laughs> and the fireworks will be at 9 o'clock. Also, look at the stewardship totals. See where they stand. You see what we need each week. And you see what we receive. Please follow guide God's leading in that area. Are there any other announcements? As you are able, let us please stand as the light of Christ enters our midst.
sing hymn number 77. 77. My mother's favorite hymn.
Yes, Susan Carr has COVID as well. Uh, I would like to ask really urgent prayer for my brother and his wife. My brother is falling daily and had um, a fall this week and has uh, a hemoglobin <coughs> in his head and has had to have stitches in his head. And he's just deteriorating every day and very close to not being with us. David and Nancy. Remember David and Nancy. Any others? Kathy? I know uh, Bob Bauer has been in the hospital and he, is, he was transferred back to the uh, nursing facility yesterday. And his condition is kind of you know, going downhill, so just ask for prayer for him. Bo Bowers? Noel, I think I saw you. I'm sorry, yes, Bo. My, uh, my mother was the sixth born of 13 children to lead the way in Biola Drive and out here in the cemetery. 13 children, they were all known except for one. That was her baby sister, Bernice Powers. She passed away this week. Oh my goodness. So I would ask that the church remember Bernice's family in your thoughts and prayers. Yes, we will remember your family. God bless you. Any others? Billy? Kay's father and well, the whole family, Billy, his family as well. Any others? I'm back to my brother who still uh, struggles with dependency and he's had pneumonia. Uh, his name's Todd and also Jim who's, who's not feeling yes. well. Uh, not up here, but we wish he were, but he's not feeling well. Yes. I pray they do find out what's going on with Jim soon. Where do I go? And your brother is Todd. Todd. Yeah. Todd. Yes. Remember Todd and, and Jim. Are there any others? Uh, I think and? we need to continue to remember Regina and yes. her mom and dad and her family. Yes. 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 Continue to remember Regina. Uh, she's not doing well. She suffered a stroke during the surgery, and the doctors are saying she may never recover from the stroke. So please uh, remember her and Christina and the entire family, the mother and father as well. Any others? My grandson, uh, he's had his surgery, Carson, and he had a very rough time last night. So goes to the, back to the doctor tomorrow. Carson had a rough night, had his surgery, and continue to pray for him. Uh, any others? Yes. Yeah. Uh, she had her second treatment Friday, and she is having side effects in Remember her prayer and our son and the family. Yes. And her name? Ashley. Ashley, that's correct. Ashley, remember her? She had her second chemo treatment and having side effects. Starting a new adventure in life. So remember, remember him. I remember when I was young enough to start new adventures. <laughs> I hear mumbling over here. Oh, you're not. Oh, you're not. Oh. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. That was absolutely a new adventure and continues to be daily. 
Any others? Well, if you have an unspoken request that you would like to give to God, let it be known by your sign of surrender. Lord, been another one of those weeks, but I haven't been alone. You were there. And in knowing this, I know that I can truly surrender all. And let us pray. Father, give us the strength and the wisdom this morning to truly surrender all. All our aches, our pains, all our trials and tribulation, our, our loneliness, our depression, the side effects of chemo, strokes, whatever it is, Huntington's disease, whatever is a affecting us, Whatever trials in life we are facing, we know we're not alone. Remind us of that today, Lord. That you are always with us. Going through whatever we are going through. Going through whatever our family is going through. Whether it is grief. Burying the last of a family. Of sisters and brothers. We pray for the family that is left behind and remind them that they have a promised comforter with them every step of the way. For those that have gotten news that a family member has cancer, remind us and remind them that you are with us every step of the way. For those who are lonely, whether it be in a nursing home or in their homes or in the midst of a crowd. Remind them they are never, ever alone. Lord, for all these petitions, we lift them up. And we know that you will hear and you will answer and you will touch as only you can. Heal where healing is needed. Comfort where comfort is needed. Strengthen where strength is needed. Save where salvation is needed. Now, Father, we leave these petitions, whether they were spoken or unspoken, in your hands, and we claim them done by praying in the manner in which your Son taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we reaffirm our faith using the traditional Apostles' Creed located on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
tithes and offerings are brought forward. different 
denominations of church. We have people that worship one way and people that worship another way and certain beliefs. But as long as we believe in the Bible and believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we're on the right path. Okay? So there were many believers out there, and they didn't all believe in the same way. But when the Holy Spirit <coughs> fell, it fell upon them. It fell upon all of them. We could say the Holy Spirit felt like rain on this group of people. Just as people feel rain and know it is rain, these people felt the Holy Spirit and knew it was the presence of God. Every person felt God's Spirit. Now, right here is a very important thing to remember. Before Jesus left to return to heaven, he said he would send the Holy Spirit to be with each person believer. You have to believe for the Holy Spirit to be in you. If you're a non-believer, if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in Jesus, and you don't believe in any of that, the Holy Spirit might have a hard time coming on. But if you are a believer and believe and trust, the Holy Spirit will be with you. God's Spirit refreshes us and makes us grow just like the rain refreshes the earth and makes things grow. And as we grow, it's our job to spread the word to others. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Patrick and his little sister that I just heard a little bit. Thank you for them being here today. We're so thankful to have them in your presence. Uh, go with them uh, as they do things this week. Uh, watch over each one of them. Take care of them. God and direct them. The Lord be with them by any part. Amen.
beautiful, beautiful music. And again, good morning. Good morning. The message this morning is don't give room for the devil. The old man is dead. Now that last part of that title it comes from a song, well actually the first song I ever sang in public, solo, called The Old Man Is Dead. Uh, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't sing anymore, hardly. But just know where this came from. Ephesians 4, verses 22, through Ephesians 5, verse 2. Again, Ephesians 4, 22, through 5, and 2. We'll give our folks at home who are watching a moment or so to find it. And if you are watching at home, please let us know by leaving a, a comment that you are watching. If you need prayer or would like a visit or a call from me, again, leave a comment or send us a message. Again, don't give room for the devil. The old man is dead. Let us all please stand at the reading of Ephesians 4, 22 through 5 and 2. It will be the King James Version. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Just like God changed me and continues to change me, every single child of God, every single Christian is in the process of being changed. Being changed to, to be more and more to the nature and like the nature of Jesus Christ. But on the, the opposite side, a person who seeks to change himself spiritually is a person who believes that if he can do more good deeds, learn more about God, or accomplish more for God's kingdom, then he will be a better person. Now that approach inevitably results in anxiety, frustration, discouragement, feelings of failure, and perhaps even depression. But the encouraging news of the Bible is that you cannot change yourself spiritually. You just can't do it. But the good news is that God, God Himself, is in the process of changing you. And the Bible tells us that we are being transformed in two ways. By the renewal of our minds and being conformed to the image of of Christ. 
In either one of those two cases, the Holy Spirit is the agent of change. We can't change ourselves spiritually. So the Holy Spirit does it. But yes, we do have a part to play. But the Holy Spirit is the one who causes the change to take place. And if we allow the Spirit to change us, we will not be the person in the future that we are today. If we submit to that transformative process. And if we do that, we are going to be more and more like Jesus. And I don't know about y'all, but that's pretty good news to me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's talk about changed in attitude. Have you ever met somebody that needed an attitude adjustment? You were tempted to give it to them, right? <laughs> My wife looked dead at me when she said that. <laughs> the changing of your mind is a change from the old way that the world thinks to the way that God thinks. There are two points of view. God's and man's. And they are polar opposites. Let me give you a few examples. The world tells you to get even with your enemies, right? But God says to leave the vengeance to Him. But He doesn't stop there. He says, love your enemies. Do good to them. And pray for them. Ooh, that's hard, isn't it? That's difficult. Yeah, you can say amen to that. It is difficult. The world tells you to fight. And to, to defend yourself at, at all costs. What does God say? Turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. Exactly right. As Christians, we are called to think like God thinks. And then with our renewed minds to act as Jesus would act. A difference in thinking brings about a difference in living. Let's talk about how the Word renews our thinking. How many here owns a Bible? Every hand better go up. I won't ha have you raise your hand on this one, but how many are guilty of leaving it on your dining room table or your coffee table more than you should? I didn't ask for hands to go with oh. <laughs> But you told on yourself. <laughs> but we are to get into God's Word regularly. In order for us to have a renewed mind, we have to have a habit of reading God's Word frequently and regularly. And we are, as soon as I can, we are going to start up Bible study again. And when I say reading God's Word, I'm going to expound on that. I don't mean just reading. I mean studying God's Word. If you're like me, you can read a paragraph and five minutes later you're like, what? You don't remember what you read. So study. Find other books that will help you. Study. And understand the Word of God. Pray and ask the Spirit of God to help you in your study. Ephesians 5 and 26 refers to a cleansing by the washing of water by the Word. And the word, more we read God's Word and trust the Spirit to quicken what we read to our spirits. The more the Word acts to cleanse our thoughts so that we can think the thoughts of Christ. And the more we read God's Word, the more we are confronted with God's truth. I like to say that the Word of God is not always what we want to read, but it's always what we need to read. Sometimes, well, all the time, God's Word convicts us of error and points us to the need for change. We don't like for something to tell us we need to change. Do we? Now once again this is interactive. Well I'll answer for you. No we don't. 
We don't like change. Whether it's a personal change, and that's the reason diets don't work. And the Word of God presents us with the truth. And it compels us to act on that truth. And the more we read God's Word, the more we become familiar with God's opinion. And the more we read God's Word, the more the Holy Spirit makes God's opinion our opinion. The Word of God will become the way that we think. And when that happens, we experience a genuine change. We begin to speak differently. We act differently. We make wiser choices. And Lord knows there's a lot of us need that. And we adopt new priorities. Our lives take on a new nature that flows from our mind. That renewed mind. Listen to Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. And then the word we read this morning tells us some things that we have to get rid of in our lives. Anger. Say amen or oh me, whichever you have to do. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, all those navy words that come out of our mouths. Now don't sit there and act like you don't do it. When you hit your thumb with a hammer, do you say thank you, Jesus? Or what do you say? Well, don't say it here. <laughs> And since we've put off the new man with his deeds, we have to put on a new man, a new person, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. How many know that you can choose what you think? The mind is subject to the will. We each have control over what we choose to think about. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said that they should be engaged in bringing every thought in the captivity to the obedience of Christ. A second Corinthians 10 and 5. I'll read it, read it again. Bringing every thought into the captivity, into captivity, to the obedience of Christ. We have the ability to screen, select, admit, and cultivate what goes on in our minds. We can keep our minds from wandering onto evil thoughts by choosing to focus our minds instead on what is good in God's eyes. And if you want to know more about that, read from Philippians 4 and 8. Actually, you sure do use a lot of scripture in your sermons. Well, I like to back it up with the Word of God. And I'll never apologize for it. We also have the ability to choose how we will think about what we perceive with our senses. In other words, we have the ability to choose what we think about, what we see and hear. Now, we have no control over some of the things that we see and hear when we're out in our everyday life, do we? Oh boy, we see some stuff, don't we? And if you're at DMV, you want to hear some language you don't want to hear. People getting upset. Or if you're on 77 or 85. You're going to hear and see some things. And you have no control over that. But what you do have control of is what you think about that situation. Or how you react to that situation. For example, let's talk about David. The Word of God says he was a man after God's own heart, right? But how many have read the story of David? Boy, he and his family were messed up. Let's tell the truth. You talk about a messed up family. Okay, David standing out on his rooftop one night, on his balcony, whatever you want to call it, and he sees Bathsheba bathing. He wasn't looking for her. He was just out surveying the city. And he saw a beautiful woman bathing. Now that could have been the end of it. 
David could have seen her, turned around, and walked back in the house, back into the palace. But did he? No. He made a choice. He began to think about what he saw. And then the word says that he sent and inquired about the woman. He did some research. He began, it began to, to dwell in his mind. He began to think about what it would be like to get a closer look. And what it would be like to be with Bathsheba. And he dwelled on it more and more. And eventually David sent for her. Sinned with her. And suffered serious consequences for that sin. When things come into our range of sensation or perception, we immediately are to evaluate them with the filter of God's Word. If we find ourselves dwelling on a thought like David did, we need to ask ourselves, why am I thinking about this? Why am I thinking this? What is the root of this thought? What will happen if I continue to think this way? Will I act upon it? And, and is that the direction I really want my life to go in? We don't need to act on impulses, desires, and lusts. We can govern what we choose to think and what we choose to do. Many people today are discouraged and they're confused. They're plagued by recurring negative thoughts or because they don't know which way to turn in their lives. But what an encouraging word that we can share with them that God can transform their lives by the renewing of their minds. They can experience a real change in their lives. One that begins with the way they think. Let's talk briefly about conformed to Christ's image. God's desire is that we become more and more like Christ in the things that we do and in the things that we say, which means that our automatic responses to life, our habitual daily rituals and the routines in which we handle life. In other words, how we go throughout our day, how we live each ordinary moment, our routine in life must reflect God's nature. That's what God wants from us, to reflect, reflect Christ's nature. And this confirmation process begins with our acknowledgement that Christ dwells within us through the Spirit of God. His Spirit occupies and fills our spirit. Jesus told His disciples that when the Holy Spirit came, He would dwell within them. Paul wrote, Paul wrote repeatedly that the Spirit of God dwells in you. That we have the Spirit of Christ. And that means Christ in you. Let's take just a brief moment to talk about some Wesleyan theology. Has anyone ever heard of sanctifying grace? Every Methodist, your head better be doing like this. Sanctifying grace. Uh, let me break it down for you. I just said that Paul says and Scripture says that Christ dwells within us, the Holy Spirit. And we've been talking about a renewed mind and now conformed to Christ's image. In other words, we need to live a life each and every day conformed to the image of Christ. How do we do that? Well, sanctifying grace. Grace. What does the word sanctify mean? To be set apart. That's what sanctify means. To be set apart. And we need to live a life that is set apart for God. Not for the world, but set apart out of the world for God. And we do that through the strength, the wisdom, and the courage that the Holy Spirit within us gives us. That's sanctifying grace. <laughs> That indwelling spirit that gives us the strength to live each and every day growing closer and closer to Christ. 
I am thankful that Christ dwells within me. I am thankful that, that God loves me enough that He offered that kind of grace, that kind of love, that He dwells through His Spirit within me, strengthening me every day. I don't know about you folks, but I need it. Have you ever been in a situation all you could see was, say was, oh Lord help me. Or seeing somebody else in a situation said, Lord help me. We need His help. Each and every day. We need the strength of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us each and every day to help us live for God each and every day. That's just a little Wesleyan theology for you. Pretty simple, huh? Fancy word, Wesleyan theology, but it's just the power that God gives you through the Spirit to live each and every day for Him. That's all it means. If you're here this morning and you're tired of being defeated at everything you do, why not let God change you into His image? Maybe it's time to, to kill off that old sinful person that you once were and become, as the line says in the song, a brand new man, a brand new woman, woman a brand new person in Christ Jesus. You know, the church is happy. Amen. Stand as you are able and join with us in singing hymn number 206. 206.
and see him, believe. Let the church say. Amen.
I'll say this and I'm getting 